If you have gotten this far, it is very likely that you have run into exceptions already. Exceptions are some sort of events that happen when something goes wrong in your program. They are some sort of error, but then again, not really. Exceptions actually don't need to mean that your program will stop and crash completely. They can happen and they can then be handled with a specific protocol. So let's have a look at a few exceptions you might have encountered already. Let's make our program crash. One of the exceptions you may have seen occurs whenever you make some sort of array. So let's make an array here. Let's call this uh, just array. And let's just give this two values. So it has a length one. And if you remember correctly, this means that we have an index zero and an index one. And the length of this array is going to be two. What happens if I then want to print the value of index two? Well, it doesn't exist. It will run, but during runtime it will throw an exception. And here we have it. It says array index out of bounds. And then it gives this very clear message. Index 2 out of bounds for length 2. It doesn't have an index 2. That's a problem. Another one you may have seen is the so-called null pointer exception. And this was occurring every time you would call something that would not exist yet. So for example, if we say this, dog d is null and then d dots, I don't know, what do I have here? Set name, let's go for that. So set name, we call our dog Java. This will actually also crash. It doesn't know it during compile time, but during runtime, this will give a null pointer exception because there is no instance of dog to give a name to. So the set name message, it will throw an exception. So these are actually both the so-called um, unchecked exceptions because these exceptions, they occur because of bad code. This is poorly coded. If I would have been coding better, this would not have gone wrong. So we have two types of exceptions. We have checked exceptions and we haven't seen these yet. But these exceptions are actually exceptions that can be expected to happen. So we need some sort of protocol for this. Since they are likely to happen, they are actually to some extent part of the normal flow. Whenever you are working with some external things that you don't have control over as a programmer, checked exceptions can happen. We will see these really soon when we are going to deal with reading and writing files. But for now, just know that checked exceptions, they require handling of the exception. And then we also have the so-called unchecked exceptions, and we have seen these just now. They're actually a result of uh, bad coding. So getting a null pointer or an array index out of bounds, that just means that you would have to code your program better. Do some checks, some if statements, and make sure that they don't happen, so that you don't perform an operation that will do something unexpected. So the ones we've seen so far, they're all unchecked. Let's have a look at one that's actually a checked exception. Exceptions are just Java classes, just like anything else. And all the exceptions, they actually come from this one here, Throwable. If we look at Throwable, we see that it's a class and lots of things extend Throwable. We have errors in Java. Errors are no exceptions. Errors are way more serious and we shouldn't be handling these. But you can see that errors extend Throwable. We also have exception and well, as you might expect, exception extends throwable as well. And all classes that extend exception, they are the so-called checked exceptions. Except for one um, exception here. And that's the so-called runtime exception. There we have it. And all exceptions that extend runtime exception, they are unchecked. So if we have a look at our... Um, Array index out of bounds exception, you'll see that it extends runtime exception. Not directly though, so it extends index out of bounds exception first, but this one extends runtime exception. Both index out of bounds and array index out of bounds are both the so-called unchecked exceptions. And unchecked exceptions, they don't need to be handled, but the checked exceptions, they must be handled. Whenever they can occur, they need to be handled. So if I would just say here, try um, index out of bounds exception, I can um, actually do this and I can run this. Um, well, I can if I insert the new keyword here, but then I can just run this and this program, 
it will throw an exception. But I don't need to really handle it. It will just crash during runtime because this is the so-called runtime exception. Unchecked. But if I was throwing exception over here, this is not something I can just do. Why? Well, because this is a checked exception. It says so too. It says unhandled exception, Java lang exception. So I need to handle this. And there are two ways to do it. Let me show you the first one. And that is actually the try catch. So I'm going to say try, throw a new exception. And then here I'm going to say catch exception, give it a temporary name. And then here I'm supposed to handle the exception. I can say e dot stack trace, for example. Clearly, this is not how you would write code. We'll see an actual example as soon as we get to reading and writing files. But this is the first way of handling exceptions. So here we have some sort of code block within our try that might throw an exception. And then here we actually get a catch block that will be catching the exception. And then here specifying the protocol to do for what would uh, be done whenever this goes wrong. So just to show you, if I say here um, something else, so after the block, it will actually go here, it throws the exception, it will print the stack trace, but after that it's fine, the protocol is being done and the program can just continue printing something else. Look, so it prints the stack trace and then it says something else. I can actually leave this out, which you never should do in your real code though, but then looking at the output, it will just look like everything was fine, whereas actually it has thrown an exception, but we don't see it. So you always want to do something. Yes. So just to show if I would say this, throw new index out of bounds exception. I don't need to catch this because this one was unchecked. <laughs> it actually says, right, this is unreachable code. It will never get here. So let's see if I can trick it a bit so that it will actually show that. This might still be too smart for this trick. Nah, it's not, it's fine. So now it might, I can run this and you'll see that it won't ever print this because, well, if true, that's always true. So this is going to be executed and this won't ever be executed. So let's see. So you see, it's throwing the exception and the program's crashing because the exception is unhandled. By the way, this is something you want because you don't want to handle an unchecked exception. In most cases. <laughs> so let's go back here again. So I have here try throw a new exception. Let's make this a slightly more specific exception. You don't really need to know it yet, but we'll see it soon. This is the input output exception, IO exception. And if you have a look at this exception, we see that it extends exception. That's good. But we can actually have multiple catch blocks here. So we can catch exception, which is more general. IO exception is an exception, so we can do this. What we cannot do, by the way, is catch something else here. So we cannot say catch, um, I think this is also a checked one, SQL exception, because, oh well, let's do this again. Because it says SQL exception, it cannot be thrown in the corresponding try block. So if you want to catch a checked exception, it knows whenever a checked exception can be thrown. So you can only catch checked exceptions that are actually likely to be thrown. Let's show what you can do, because you can have multiple catch blocks. We can say catch IO exception E, and then, well, let's just say um, IO problem or something. Then just print the stack trace. And we can actually have another catch block but it should still be an exception we could possibly catch in a try block. So let's say catch uh, exception E and then just print um, exception. It, was, it will never execute both catch blocks, by the way, so we'll just execute one. There we go. So I'm going to run this and it's going to say IO problem. It will print the stack place afterwards though. It will first print something else and then it will do the standard error output over here. One more thing with this, this is called, I'm not sure, I think this is called multi-catch, which would kind of make sense. And it's important that you always have the more specific one before the less specific one. If I was to turn this around like this, it won't ever get here because any exception would already be caught by the previous one. 
because it, it also says IO exception has already been caught. Because exception will simply catch everything. So whenever you do this, make sure that they are in the right order, like this. There are some more details on exception. Um, I won't bug you with that right now. Let's just look at this try catch like this. There's one more thing that I want to mention, and that's the finally block. And in the finally block, you can put some code that will always be executed. Well, almost always, if you don't kill the program in your catch, that is. So this finally block, um, whatever I, I write here, it's always being executed. And this is used for closing resources. So you can close resources over here to avoid not closing resources whenever you run into an exception before you get the chance to close them in your try block. So this is one way of handling exceptions. And I promised you I was going to show you two. So let's say this all this code over here was not in our main method, but was in some static method beneath our main method like this. Exception example methods. There we go. Say that I would possibly throw an IO exception with this method. I can say throw new IO exception like this. And here I could call this method like this. Then if I wouldn't want to be handling the exception here yet with a try catch block, I can also add the exception to the method signature as it's suggesting here. And it goes like this. I would say exception example method throws IO exception like this. And this way, wherever this method is being called, the responsibility to handle the exception with try catch is being um, is being moved to the place where it's being called. So now if I would want to be able to call this here, I could either say add throws IO exception to our main method signature, or I could decide to actually surround it with a try catch block. And it's always best to surround it with a try catch block as soon as you know what the exception handling should look like. So if you would know what the exception handling should look like um, only from the place where you're calling this method, then this is where you should be catching it. But if you would already know how to deal with it here, it's best to do it here to avoid having to write multiple try catch blocks for the same purpose. That's just a waste of your time. Oh, let's specify what I want to catch. I want to catch IO exception and here I'll just do this. Okay, so this was quite an introduction to exceptions. Let me end with drawing you with my super special Spain skills the structure of the inherit of the exception classes in Java. So here we have the throwable class. And then here we have error, which we didn't talk too much about, but just know that that's something else in Java. It can also be thrown, but should never have been caught. You could though, but you really should not. Then here we have exception. And pretty much everything that extends from exception is checked. But except for one sub branch pretty much of exceptions and they're here and these are the runtime exceptions. So let me do some line drawing. So throwable, so error extends throwable, exception extends throwable. Runtime exception extends exception and actually whole this block, everything that's extending exception, is a so-called checked exception. Except for everything that's extending runtime exception, these are the unchecked exceptions. So for example, null pointer or um, index out of bounds, these are all the runtime exceptions. And they happen due to bad code and the exceptions over here, they um, should be caught because they are just likely to happen because it's out of your hands at that point. If you have a look at the video on reading and writing files, you'll see exceptions in real life and you have more of a grasp of how to handle them and why they could possibly happen.